My aunt once told me how she got lost in Pittsburgh. She asked the couple for directions. Realizing how difficult it is to negotiate the many challenging one-way streets, bridges, and so forth, they responded with, come, follow me, or similar words, and offered to lead her to her destination. Almost at the very end of the Gospel of St. John, chapter 19, Jesus said to Peter, Come, follow me. Earlier, in chapter 13, Simon Peter said to him, Master, where are you going? Jesus answered him, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, though you will follow later. Peter said to him, Master, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Amen, amen, I say to you, the cock will not crow before you deny me three times. Why did Jesus say no the first time and then yes the second? Between these two stories, Peter experienced Jesus' beautiful discourse at the Last Supper, the forgiving glance of Jesus after his denial, Jesus' crucifixion, the resurrection, remember Peter actually entered the tomb, the gift of the Holy Spirit in the upper room. One may say that Peter was baptized in the fullest sense of the word. He was immersed into the tomb, combined with teaching and the reception of the Holy Spirit. Peter could now follow Christ. When James and John asked to be with Jesus at his left and right, he asked them if they would accept the bath of pain, baptism. When Jesus says, Come, follow me, he is not inviting us to watch what happens to him, but to live like he does. He calls us to be baptized into his death and resurrection. Metropolitan Basil spent much of his energy promoting vocations to the consecrated life and to the priesthood. If he were able to speak to us today, he would probably say, Come, follow me as I have followed Christ. The only thing that is guaranteed is the bath of pain. Earthly honors are ultimately meaningless. He certainly knew this pain in his illness, but also in the struggles of his ministry. His ordination to the priesthood and to the episcopacy were not honors, but extensions of his baptism, opportunities to share in the salvific action of Jesus Christ. When Jesus says, come follow me, he doesn't say, I'll point out the way, like the nice folks in my aunt's story. Nor does he say, the path God has given me will be yours. He says, come follow me. As I accept the mission given me, so you must accept the mission given you. Metropolitan Basil invites us to look at his dead body and be reminded that dying to self is what removes what separates us from God and what enables us to follow Christ. Metropolitan Basil, thank you for accepting Christ's invitation and for inspiring us to do so as well.